So here's a grace case illustrating the utility of MR when it comes to pelvic imaging. Now often on CT, the pelvic viscera look just like mush. You're not going to be able to really give detailed diagnoses regarding the fallopian tubes, the adnexa, etc. Now you could use ultrasound, but I think we all realize that ultrasound also suffers from a relative lack of specificity. Now here's an example where the MR is really useful. Notice this huge tubular shaped structure in the right adnexa. It's extending from posterior to the uterus all the way along its lateral aspect into the anterior pelvis. Now this large tubular shaped structure is T2 bright, so it's fluid filled, but notice how it's markedly T1 hyper intense as well. So that means that you're dealing with hemorrhagic blood products that are T1 and T2 hyper intense. And so given this tubular shape, given the internal blood products, this is a classic example of marked hematosalpinx. Now, there is a differential diagnosis, and clearly when you get hematosalpinx, you're going to think about a number of different diagnoses, including PID, endometriosis, maybe even obstructing tumor. But in this case, I'd argue that the most common cause of hematosalpinx that I see in my practice is usually going to be endometriosis. And this is a patient with hematosalpinx as a result of a long history of endometriosis with multiple prior surgical resections. Great case of hematosalpinx on MR.